Conventionally, we live life labeling all of our thoughts, emotions, sensations as either positive, negative, or neutral. Conventionally, we learn to apply short moments and train up in descriptions. So something like anger, um, feeling bad physical sensations, feeling pain, um, envy, jealousy, irritation, upset, frustration, uh, fear, hope, you know, all of these are given a, a, a negative label. And then the other things like achievement, success, uh, happiness, falling in love, relaxation, you know, all of these things then are generating these positive ideas. And then there are the neutral ones, uh, brushing your teeth, um, tying your shoes, just riding in a taxi and you're not even thinking about anything or being on the lovely buses in India where time is just going by and you're just, you're not really engaged in anything. So you've got positive, negative, and neutral. And what we're usually trying to do is accumulate positive, get rid of negative. And we apply a lot of strategies. The strategies like, oh yeah, you could list a million different strategies for getting rid of a negative negativity. I've tried many myself and found some kind of temporary relief from negativity. And then there are moments in life when we have really positive experiences where everything feels and looks great like the way we want it to. Yet subtly there's always the hope that it won't go away and fearing that the positive will go away. Or hoping that the negative doesn't come in and fearing that it will. So constantly in a state of hope and fear. And you know, that just produces a world of anxiety. We can all look at our own experience and know what that anxiety feels like. You know, everybody on a daily basis experiences some kind of anxiety. And then everybody goes to a certain length to relieve the anxiety. Somebody may do yoga to relieve anxiety. Another person may behead somebody to relieve anxiety. So you see the vast extremes of the techniques we go through to relieve anxiety. In my case, trying to relieve anxiety, it worked for about five minutes and then the anxiety would just come back. And so it was very frustrating, you know, using these methods of trying to manipulate the data streams. So, there's another way, to, though, to look at these things. Um, in short moments, many times, practice allowing the description to be as it is, rather than holding on to its label. So something positive arises, that's fine. Just let the descriptions of it be as it is for short moments, many times. Your open intelligence, that which is looking, knowing, that is required to even experience anything that we call positive, negative, or neutral is always on. It's always the basis. It is never affected whether the experience is positive, negative, or neutral. So when you feel positive and you take a short moment, you check in and open intelligence is completely unaffected. You know, you may have bodily sensations, it may make you smile, but the open intelligence, that which is knowing, is completely unaffected. Open intelligence is powerful, alert, and knowing. And then the negativity arises. Check it out. Has open intelligence changed in the slightest? You know, the bodily sensations certainly change, and your thoughts and your emotions, you get all fired up, and you want to tell somebody where to go, or you want to behead somebody, or you want to run to the beach and do your yoga, or not, nothing against yoga, I just used those two examples because, you know, that's what came to mind. Um, so, testing it out, testing short moments of allowing data to be as it is. We start to find that the benefit is present always. Benefit is what is shining forth, not in the descriptions. So we don't go to an extreme and say, well, beheading somebody is beneficial. And then we don't say, well, 
relaxing on a beach chair on the beach is most beneficial. Beneficial potency is required for any of these data to shine forth. Now, yeah, this is something that we start to directly experience by showing up. It's not something you can intellectually get on the first day coming here or even any time in the training. We never recommend trying to intellectually grok <laughs> open intelligence. Open intelligence is really, it's indescribable, ineffable. However, we can experience though. We can experience it. You know, just sitting in these chairs, we experience open intelligence. Open intelligence is on without needing to be turned off. You, nobody can give you open intelligence. It's not in some other dimension and it somehow comes into your consciousness and there is open intelligence. Open intelligence is all pervasive. But open intelligence, it's, it's just a different way of operating. Conventional intelligence is again based on data naming, positive, negative, neutral. Open intelligence is like having the vantage on top of a mountain where you see everything clearly. You're able to see that, you know, you might experience anger, however, by letting it be as it is, the skillful means to act in that situation are available. Anger is a good example because usually when anger comes up, there's a a knee-jerk reaction, you know, boom, immediate response. However it might look, some people may scream and yell, other people may run away, other people may stuff it, you know, just keep stuffing it and stuffing it and stuffing it until it just, it can't be stuffed anymore and then whoosh, off with the head. So practicing short moments when anger is arising Somebody makes you angry, you have a choice. See, usually we can be all lost in the mental patterns, the thought descriptions, kind of on automatic pilot. But more and more, by showing up and hearing that open intelligence is skillful, always on, informing our next response, we see that we actually have a choice in that moment. You may forget a few times when you want to yell at somebody and you just yell at them. But more and more you remember, okay, I have a choice. Firstly, I'm going to let the data be exactly as it is, the datum of anger. Whether I'm right and they're wrong, or whether I think something needs to be said, <coughs> whether I want to really not feel this anger, I'm just going to allow the anger to be as it is. Just like we're allowing the breeze and the air right now to be as it is. You're not trying to make the breeze go that way. You're not trying to push the breeze the other way. You're just letting it be as it is. <coughs> so more and more through practice, short moments many times, we can apply this to everything we experience, whether it's a thought, a positive thought or a negative thought, we see we have the choice. Do we want to follow the stories off into their fantasy land or they arise and they self-release? They self-release anyway. You know, even the reoccurring thought patterns, they just arise and they self-release. So for me, this was so important because I actually felt relaxation for the first time in my life. People always used to tell me, you need to relax. And then when they would tell me to relax, I would get more tense and say, how do I relax? When you telling me to relax is making me more tense. You should relax and then I can relax. <laughs> Now, starting to recognize more and more complete relaxation amidst the datum. Or anxiety. My delicious espresso that I made this morning, thank you for that fresh grind. When I come up on stage, it somehow kicks in about 20 times its power. It's like the espresso I had, somehow it feels like I had 20. And my eyes are watering, my heart is racing. <laughs> thinking, Marcus, what'd you put in that coffee? <laughs> you, can, you can edit that part out. Um, so what, I could choose to run off stage, or I could choose to go to the beach and do yoga, or I can do 
some kind of affirmation, don't be anxious, don't be anxious, don't be anxious. Instead, I can allow it to be exactly as it is. There's beneficial potency within that anxiety. I see that it's just coming here for the last three weeks and seeing how everyone has poured in so much beautiful effort to build all of this. And everybody could be experiencing anxiety or just ease or joy or maybe anything can come up here. And seeing how that doesn't stop us from actually contributing to beneficial society. So I can experience complete anxiety and allow it to be as it is and I'm still able to sit here and talk with you and share my experience of how Balance View is just creating beneficial society around the globe. People showing up regardless of the patterns, of the, of the afflictions, um, regardless if we're trying to figure out the crucial juncture of open intelligence and data. It's so easy to just show up and see that our beneficial nature, it's inherent. It's built in, it's engineered into each and every person, every being, everything. So that makes it easy. We don't, ha we don't have to spend any time trying to do self-improvement, fix each other, go into workshops and tell everybody what they need to fix about themselves. Everybody taking responsibility for their own data streams. They're like a stream. You know, you, one moment you feel anxious and the next moment you feel happy and then you look on the internet and see all of the horrendous things that are happening and then you feel grief and it's all this flow of data and if we try to uh, micromanage it, arrange it not feel some, feel others, it's very exhausting I mean no wonder everybody in the world their faces are all scrunched up and people dying early and <coughs> it was no wonder, I mean we experience on a daily basis trillions of data streams. A lot of them just go unrecognized. It's like something like anger and anxiety and desire, just, they just get our attention. Whereas the little ants crawling on the ground, they don't really get our attention. So that, you know, the, the basis of being human, it, it doesn't need to be complicated. You know, if we try to be like everybody else, or if we try to create some kind of rigid structure that everybody needs to adhere to, I mean, that just creates a lot of tension. It doesn't allow people to be themselves as they are. Um, so, another thing that I find was helpful is to know is that, you know, anything that we do label as negative about ourselves, maybe we're sarcastic, maybe we're arrogant, or prideful or, you know, all the, the list of things we really want to change about ourselves and that our partner and family tell us we need to change. Nothing need be done about them. They, by letting them be as they are, they self-resolve. I didn't have to work at getting rid of my anger to be a better person. I just let it be as it is. My anger before coming to the training was very explosive and harmful. But I didn't have to spend any time trying to be more positive, like that person over there who's never angry. Or I didn't have to do anything with my desire, or my jealousy, or my envy, or my arrogance. <laughs> I didn't think I was arrogant until I came to the training, and then I knew how arrogant I really was. But that's, that's fine, I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. But seeing we have a choice in each moment, do we want to just blurt out all of those things we're thinking? Let them settle and see how there's a, a really amazing connection with more and more people. And again, you know, it really comes down to each of us testing this out. Otherwise, it's just a bunch of words. Doesn't make so much sense, but you know, it, it still can resonate very quickly. The first open meeting I came to, it really just resonated. I knew there was something within me that was, could be easeful, that could be powerful and potent and contribute to the world. I knew it, and that's why I spent all of my time seeking and searching. Because I knew there was something about me and about others that would really flourish, that we could flourish, that we 
people would start to recognize we don't need to continue destroying each other. I mean, we really don't want that. I mean, nobody really wants to destroy every person, everything. We just, we want it to work out, regardless of background. And, and that's what we're doing here. We're demonstrating. It's a small group here, but then thinking about this globally, people on all continents, many communities sprouting all over the world, people coming together, relying on the unity of open intelligence, not the unity of trying to make our data streams look like their data streams. That's just impossible. So there's an inherent um, yeah, unity, you could say. You know, what about us is the exact same as somebody who's doing horrendous acts. It's our open intelligence. So we really need education in the nature of intelligence and in the nature of our mind so that we don't use our mind in harmful ways. So that's really what it comes down to. And then we have a lot of fun as well. You know, life isn't a drag anymore. My life was a drag. I would, every day I'd wake up and complain about this, that, and the other thing. And it, amazingly, I find that I just don't do that anymore. You know, for me, that's a tremendous gift to not have to criticize every single thing. Uh, I find a, a real connection with anyone, really. doesn't matter who they are or where they're from. And just to say, you know, we've been involved for, you know, I've been involved for about eight years. I've been showing up to open meetings. Um, I have a trainer that I rely on for support. Um, I do many, many trainings, and I rely on short moments. So there's a the complete support available for how to do this with everybody's unique circumstances. You know, then we don't gloss over certain topics. You know, we can really apply the balance through training to each and every individual situation. In the meeting and group trainings, we start to hear how we're all very much alike. We might have unique circumstances, but in general, we're just so much alike. It's very normalizing also. And um, yeah, so then people from any background, whether they're interested in a spiritual church, things and whether they're interested in, um, you know, positive social change or if they're interested in gardening or music or anything, you know, we just find how we can empower our passion, areas of passion. And what's really amazing here also is that we come in, we do some service and then we start to shine in different areas. People just naturally gravitate and their gift strengths and talents, they're just like lo unending lotus blossoms coming out. And everything we do here just innovates on a daily basis. So that's really incredible, just seeing how smart and clear everyone becomes by letting data be as it is.